Hey everyone, welcome back. This is the second video in a series on uh, on Microsoft Excel. The first video was how to do VLOOKUP in Excel, and the second video is going to be how to do the VBA VLOOKUP equivalent. If you're not familiar, VBA is the language that kind of sits underneath, if you will, of Microsoft Excel. And if you can write code in VBA, then you can automate spreadsheets. So this video is aimed for beginners, uh, people who don't really have much experience with VBA um, or necessarily VLOOKUP at all. Um, so if that's you, then this video is for you. If you're, a, if you're a pro, if you already know this like the back of your hand, then this probably uh, won't be the best video for you. So in the last video, we used this toy data set. Uh, the weekdays in column C uh, that corresponds to what we're having for dinner in column D. And so for instance, on Monday we're having chicken, on Saturday we're having pizza, etc. In the last video I did a VLOOKUP here in this uh, in these two cells, but in this video I want to do the equivalent in, uh, in VBA. If you have the developer tab in the ribbon up here, go ahead and click on this, and then you can click on the Visual Basic. That'll get you into the code editor here. If you do not have that, you can always press the Alt and a F11 key, and that will do the exact same thing. So this is not too many lines of code. Uh, I don't know, 15, 20 lines uh, to, do, to do a VLOOKUP. Um, it's pretty simple. I'll start with uh, my option explicit. This is an optional piece. Um, this is just a kind of personal preference. The option explicit forces you to define your variables. Um, sometimes you can leave them open-ended and VBA will kind of pick the best data type for you. Um, I like forcing myself to define the data types up front. Um, just it's, it's better for memory, it's better for, um, um, it makes your code a little bit cleaner and neater, I think. But like I said, it's up to you if you wanna do that or not. Next, we want to initialize our, our um, subroutine. So we'll type sub v lookup with an open and close quotes uh, that generates the end sub statement. So this will be, um, this is our, our code snippet here, meaning anything that we write in here in between these two lines of code will get executed at the same time, okay? So first of all, we're gonna want to uh, declare our variables and our data types here. So we'll do dim wb as workbook. What this statement means is I've just told VBA that there is a variable that I'd like to create called WB, and I'd like to set that as workbook a data type. Next, uh, we'll do oops, uh, we'll do WS as worksheet, and similar to the first line, this just says declare um, a WS a variable WS as data type worksheet. Third, we're going to do a table array, and we'll declare that as a range. And finally, we will declare lookup value and VBA lookup as data types or data type string. We've declared uh, two variables in this line, the lookup value and the VBA lookup both as data type string. That'll make more sense in just a few minutes here. Next, we want to give these variables some, uh, some meaning. All we've done here is basically declare that they exist. You can think of that, at least I think of it, it might not be the best analogy, but I think of it like as a, a, a glass of water. You pull a glass out of the cupboard, you've got an empty glass. This is what these are right now. The glass exists, but there's nothing in it. So let's go ahead and fill that glass up. So we're gonna set WB equal to this workbook, and then set WS equal to WB dot worksheets sheet one. And then we need to declare our, uh, define our table array equals ws dot range c 
to D. So uh, then we can figure out whether or not I've written the code correctly by doing something like a message box. A message box in VBA just gives you a pop-up. We'll do um, WS dot name. If I did this correctly, it should pop up the name of the sheet. And what I do incorrect, it gave me an error there. Ah, because I named this to be Ryan. So let's do this. Let's change this tab name to be dinner, dinner. There we go. There's our pop-up box. It popped up the name of the worksheet. Get rid of that because we don't need it. And here I've declared uh, my table array. In other words, the columns or the range of data that we're going to be working with to be both column C and D, the entire column. I like doing this because it makes it a little bit more dynamic. Technically, probably what we should do um, if we wanted to be a little more precise would be to declare it C4 to D10 because that's our, um, that's our actual range that we're working with. However, if you wanted to add another line in the future, and you'd only declared your range to be C4 to D10, then you'd miss out any new line here. So I like making it a bit more dynamic in that sense, and we'll just declare it to be both columns C and D. That way we can add as many lines as we want in the future, uh, and our code will still work. <clears throat> Then we will let's see, define our lookup value. And we'll make this an input box. Uh, please enter the day you'd like to find dinner for. That's probably not the most grammatically correct statement I've ever written, but it'll it'll work for right now. VBA lookup. It's going to be application dot worksheet function dot the lookup. And then we need to enter our arguments. If you recall from the first video, uh, there are four arguments that any V lookup needs. You need your lookup value, your table array, your column number, um, and then this last uh, false here. Um, I'll show you in one second. So we're going to put in our lookup value, which we've defined above. And then we'll put in our table array, which we've also defined above. And then we'll put in the integer 2 and false. So this is two because we're, our table array is two columns long. And it corresponds to the column that you would like to return uh, the value from. In other words, one, two. We want to return the dinner column. Okay, so that's why this is two. And then this is false because in all of my years, I've, I've never seen anyone use true. I am certain that there are applications for it out there, but in finance and accounting uh, in financial services, literally 100% of the time over the past almost 20 years, it's always been false. Um, so yeah, I'd be curious to see if anyone has any uses for true. So leave a comment down below. I'd really like to hear what your use case is for true. My experience, it's false 100% of the time, so you don't really even need to think about this, just always be false. You really can't go wrong with an exact match. True means approximate match or close enough. False means exact match. So the only thing left to do here is to get the uh, output. We're going to use a message box. And we'll say on lookup value, in other words, the date, the day, I mean, you 
will be having and So let's run this real quick. Now we can run this VBA code by just hitting this kind of a play button, play looking button here. This just runs the subroutine that we're uh, that we're currently on. So again, this will execute every line within this subroutine from sub VLOOKUP down to end sub. Everything in here will get executed. Click that play. This pops up this input box. So I want to know what we're having on Saturday. Hit enter. On Saturday, you will having you will be having pizza. Uh, let's try that one more time. On uh, let's see what we're having on Monday. Monday, you'll be having chicken. Good, because I love chicken. So that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I mean, there's there's really like when you stop and think about it, there's um, three components. First, you want your declarations. This is where you declare uh, variables to exist. Uh, second is the assignments. And then our third piece is just our output here. The, the output is just our, our message box. Um, so that, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. That's how you do a VLOOKUP in, in VBA. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or anything. Thanks.